hello everyone welcome to civil engineering universe if you like my videos then please subscribe and share and comment likes so today i am going to tell you about the seven basic rules while lapping the rebars so uh, during construction reinforcement work is necessary and in reinforcement work we must give focus on lapping so it is not always available the required length of the reinforcement so sometimes we need to lap the reinforcement so in this video you can get a clear concept and idea how to lap the reinforcement so these are the seven basic rules of lapping the rebars reinforcement so left length diameter when we extend the top bar of the column from the bottom bar having an unequal diameter then the lamp lap length is calculated for the smaller dial that is if the upper bar of the 16 mm diameter is lapped with a lower bar of 20 mm dial and if the lap length is taken as 50 times of diameter then lap length of 50 die equals to 50 into 16 mm equal to 800 mm so it is correct lap length of 50 meter lap length equals to 50 times of d that is 50 into 20 mm equal to 1000 mm it is incorrect so you can see clearly in figure also now lapping zone where we should lap the reinforcement so when we provide the lapping in a column all the rebar should be lapped in zone B as shown in the figure. So the top and bottom portion of the column that is zone A L by 4 length should be avoided as there will be a maximum moment in this zone due to lateral forces acting to the columns. So in this picture you can clearly see the lapping length and how to lap the reinforcement in column. So uh, in lap length first we should consider lap length diameter and then the lapping zone so these two sections are clearly discussed in this video and hope you have got the clear concept of the lapping, uh, lapping length so it is very important for site engineer so if it plays a vital role in structure stability of the column so you must give more focus on lapping length and lapping diameter so these are the visuals and videos and figures along with the description so you can get okay now we'll move to the next pages if the length of the column that is l then the l by 4 length from the top and bottom of the column is categorized as tension zone a and the outer and the center sorry and the center l by 2 length of the column zone b is considered a safe area for the lapping purpose so here you can see in picture clearly next is for a staggered bar so all the bars that are left should be staggered with zone b as shown in the figure in any case not more than 50 percent of the rebar should be left in the same level if all the column bars are left at the same level it leads to the failure of the column so here are the different zones zone a b c so you can zone a and zone b so here in figure also you can see clearly now for stirrups spacing the spacing of the stirrups in the lapping zone should be minimum when compared to the regular column center to center stirrup spacing so if the designed regular spacing for the column stirrup is 175 center to center then the spacing of the stirrup in the lapping zone may be 150 center to center or 125 center to center as according to the column design so you can see a stirrup spacing how it is clearly visible and in figure you can easily understand next is welding the rebar so how we can we welding is also one of the methods of <coughs> joining the reinforcement so welding of the rebar as per is code if the bar diameter is greater than or equal to 36 mm then you should consider welding those 
bar instead of lapping. If welding is not possible, then you can lap these bars with an additional spiral of 6 mm bar at the split length. So in figure you can see how it is clearly welding done of the rebar. And next is joggle length. So for the rebars of the diameter greater than 12 mm, you can consider provided a joggle of 1 in 6. That means if the bar diameter is 20 mm, then the length of the joggle part of the bar can be calculated as j equal to 6 into diameter of the rebar. So equals to 6 into 20 equal to 120 mm. So in figure you can clearly see there how the joggle length is to be calculated. So basically you can see call it j equal to 6 times of d. So these are the columns lapping process. Next is now let's talk about rebar placing. When we tie the rebars in the lapping zone, the joggle part of the bar should be placed over the inner surface of the bottom bar as shown in the figure to get a, a uniform clear cover from the concrete surface. So if you tie the joggled portion of the rebar over the outer surface of the bottom bar, then the lapping zone invades the concrete cover area provided for the bars. So here are different equal clear covers and unequal clear covers. So now next is why we joggle the reinforcement bar in the civil construction. So first point is to maintain the uniform clear cover of the reinforcement bar. Next is to bring back the drifted rewards in their specified position. Third is to maintain the center to center distance between the rewards. And fourth one is to provide the imbalance in the load transfer of the. So next point is to maintain the center to center distance between the rewards. And fourth one is to prevent the imbalance in the load transfer from the one RCC structure to another. So in figure you can see equal clear cover and equal clear covers and columns and their description in figure clearly it is mentioned. Next one is why we provide a staggered reinforcement bar in the lapping zone. So in figure, in figure you can see lapping in the same level and a staggered lapping. So these are the four points that you must know. So first point is to prevent the buckling of the RCC structure. Second one is to resist the lateral loads with a given factory of factor of safety. Third one is to prevent the failure of the structure at the lapping zone. And fourth one is to resist the bending moment and to safely transfer the superimposed load. So these are the points that that's why we provide staggered reinforcement over the lapping in same level so i think you have understood my lectures and for next lectures and update of different civil engineering knowledge and tricks and idea please subscribe my channel and you should know this is very important topic as a site engineer you must know and as a structural engineer also you should know these all so this much for today. Okay, bye.